let's go. Hi and welcome, I hope you're doing great. Ben Carter gave me a comment on my previous video and he wanted to see a comparison between the 3D printers I have. So what did I do? Well, I gathered all my 3D printers I have. So let me give you a quick introduction with the pros and cons, the pricing, well, all the stuff you want to know. And with all that information, I will tell you which printer I think is the best one. Let's get started. The Anate 8 is only $160, making it the cheapest 3D printer that I have. It is a full DIY kit. You have to assemble the entire thing. It comes in a big package with a bunch of parts. You have to assemble it. It takes three to four hours. Some people like the DIY experience. I encourage it because you learn a lot while building the printer, but some people want the finished product from the start. Then this is not the printer for you. Something I dislike tremendously is the safety concern. An open power supply, which means you have to wire mains voltages, not safe. It does not have the best printing quality, it does not have the largest build volume, but for a price tag of just $160, that's a good deal in my book. If you are looking for the absolutely cheapest 3D printer out there, then the NT8 is the printer for you. Next. Now this I would say is a step up to the NT8, I just cannot get the same high printing quality on the NT8 as I can on the Tarantula. We are still at the low cost range of 3D printers. This one at $200 is one of the cheaper alternatives. We still have the safety issue with an open power supply. I've had it for a couple of months and it still works great. Let me give you a proper introduction to this one because I haven't reviewed it yet. It's called the Micro Delta Rework from Emotion Tech. It's a company established in France, which is really nice. And as you can see, it's a Delta printer. To give you perspective of how small this is, here is a banana for scale. It fits inside the TiVo Delta. If the TiVo Tarantula and the NT8 was true DIY kits, then this is the next level. You have to even assemble the hot end. Nothing comes pre-installed. That's not to say that I didn't like the experience. In fact, this is the only DIY kit that I have assembled with proper instructions, good English and clear images. And no open power supply, you get a good power adapter. So if you are a parent with a kid that wants a DIY kit, I can't recommend this enough. It is pricey at $450. I really wished it would have been a lot larger. Most of the things I want to print, I can't even make with this because of the small size. So it is a printer that's gonna fit some of you, but not the majority. <laughs> this is the GTEC i3. It doesn't really have a name other than GTEC i3, spelled with three E's. GTEC. I really have nothing to say about this printer. I made a build review a long time ago and I never got it working properly. Initially, my concern was the stepper drivers. I swapped them out, nothing changed. Now I salvage parts from it, basically. If you do have this printer, give me a comment below. Oh, maybe I should put it over here. It's a $1900 printer called the Mankati E180. I don't think the pronunciation is correct, Mankati, but I kind of like it, so I'm gonna stick with it. The Mankati E180 is a different printer in terms of it's the only printer I have with an enclosure. It's the only printer above thousand dollars well above thousand dollars but it does perform let me show you some of its features you can take out the heated bed like that's not cool enough take a closer look and you can see all these holes are here so when the filament goes in it increases the overall surface area and therefore makes the print stick a lot better the hot end can reach 350 degrees Celsius. So now you can print the high temperature industrial nylon filament. And that's something no other printer I have can do, which makes this very special. It's equipped with an onboard camera, air purifier, it got Wi-Fi. It's just packed with all these features. Needless to say, it came pre-built, open the box, 10 minutes later and you will be printing. If you have $1,900 burning a hole in your pocket, Go for it. I really wish I would have some good news about the Black Widow. I know a lot of you have been asking for it, but right now I don't even know if there's gonna be a review of it. It all started with a faulty hot end. I replaced it, no big deal. The prince was beautiful. I, I was really impressed by how well it coped with flexible filaments. All of a sudden the display is showing the incorrect temperatures 
so I replaced the thermistors, didn't help. I flashed the motherboard with a new firmware, didn't help. I replaced the entire motherboard, didn't help. So I am stuck. I was looking forward to review this printer and add it to my arsenal of 3D printers, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Come on. If you do want more information about this printer, go to the Facebook group, link in the description below. Here we go again. Gosh. The TiVo Delta is $900, it's the fastest one and it's the one with the largest printing volume. I really have nothing too negative to say about this printer other than the fact that it is a Delta printer. And because of the Delta skin configuration, you will see salmon skin artifacts. Salmon. However, because of the Delta configuration, you will also be able to print significantly faster than any other Cartesian model 3D printer. The heated bed, even though it's this large, heats up beautifully and it wouldn't be too difficult to make an enclosure for the printer. Well, what can I say? I love it. And that brings us to the last one. This is the Creality CR10 for around $400. I made a review of it just a couple of days ago where I stated that this was the best 3D printer. Let me explain. The best 3D printer from my perspective is the one that the majority of my viewers could benefit from. A couple of months ago, that was the TiVo Tarantula. It's a great printer for $200 and it's a DIY kit that performs remarkably good. And now we jump forward a couple of months and we have the Creality CR10. With a massive build volume, the construction is sturdy and not to spoil anything, but the electronics in here does look pretty good indeed. And with all these improvements over the TiVo Tarantula, I would now consider this to be the new benchmark, the new, the new affordable and the new best 3D printer for the majority of you guys. I sincerely hope that answered your question, Ben. Thank you very much for posting a comment. I would be crazy if I didn't take the opportunity to start all these printers at once, printing with the same filament and the same model so we can compare the printing quality of each printer. Let's go. This here is what we will try to print, a small, red, beautiful, beautiful looking fox. This is starting six printers as fast as I can. Let's go. Done. That was pretty fast, right? We are about halfway finished and not too surprising, the TiVo Delta seems to be having first place right now regarding speed. When it comes to quality, I have to say the CR10 looks pretty, really quite nice. There we have it, all the printers are now finished. I do apologize for the Anate 8 and the Moncati E180. You can see the severe layer separations. I didn't spool up enough filament, I had to stop it mid-print, resulting in the severe layer separations. You can see it was all me, not the printer. Apart from that mishap, they do run the exact same settings, the same speed setting, the same number of uh, perimeters, the same layer height, but obviously I can't keep them exactly the same. Every single printer is unique. So the settings might be slightly modified depending on which printer I'm using. I realized that I forgot to scale down the Fox on the Moncati E180, so this one might appear slightly bigger than the other ones. I was also running flexible filament right before the sprint, so I forgot to turn on the retraction settings. Gee, I feel real professional right now. The 3D printer to be judged on its printing quality solely by printing a red fox. 
but it does give you an indication, a perspective of what you can expect from buying any of these printers. So here is a list of which Fox belongs where. Let's begin in this corner right here. We have the NFA8, we have the TiVo Tarantula, and I have to give it to the Tarantula. It does have very fine printing quality, while the NFA8 is a little bit more rough. The Emotion Tech Rework Micro Delta printer surprised me. The printing quality is absolutely amazing. A significant improvement over the Tivo Tarantula and the Anate 8. The Moncati E180 is in the top. The printing quality is absolutely stunning, even though it looks crap from the front. That's all because of the retraction settings being turned off. If we turn it and take a look on the back, it's perfect. And I guess you could expect this from a $1900 printer. The TiVo Delta did such a good job, especially considering it was done half an hour before any other printer. Though I have to say that it doesn't match the printing quality of the CR10. It's mind-blowing how well it puts down each layer, almost so it's invisible, even at 0.2mm layer height. Awesome. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Have a nice day. Bye.